It's time for Push to Play, your weekly trophy podcast with Mindy and CJ. Hello, welcome to episode 15 of Push 2 Plat in E3 week. Are you excited? You can tell I'm excited. I probably won't even sleep this week. Microsoft Conference can't wait. But let's talk some PlayStation first before we get to that day. And I am joined today by co-host The Mind is the City. How are you today, Mindy? Hello, not quite as excited as you. You're, you're very <laughs> excited. I'm hugely excited. This is like uh, you know Christmas for a kid again. You, you don't feel the same way? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're two, just bitter and jaded. Three, two of the three powerhouses are not there. So it's kind of like, I don't know, I guess it's like Christmas, but, you know, your your siblings your siblings and one of your parents didn't bother to buy you <laughs> That's anything. Right. That's right. Maybe it'll be like a blended family. Do you think do you think Sony might make a guest appearance somewhere else, you know, or drop a drop a video or something? Yeah, I don't know what's up with them. It seems like they're trying to go Nintendo's route and having the, you know, cuz Nintendo started doing the Nintendo Directs. Mm. I don't know. Um they got to do a site better than last time. Was it when was it that they debuted like when they announced Life of Black Tiger, I guess maybe that was the point was they had this contract for this game and they decided we want to launch this official trailer that we tied ourselves into at a time when no one is going to look at it. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yes. You know, yes. kind of like when movie theaters sneak in movies, like horror movies in January. I'm sort of disappointed they're not going to be there because I loved the Shakuhachi flute solo last year. And, you know, I was I was hoping for another repeat performance of that. That was a fantastic five minutes that I, I didn't expect. So it is a little disappointing. But, look, I understand the Microsoft conference is tipped to run at two hours. So who knows what is going to happen there? Hopefully some hopefully some music and some instruments. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, I, I can tell your muted enthusiasm. How about, about for any of the developer conferences? Do you, I, I can't imagine you have too much interest in Bethesda. Not, uh, there is nothing on their docket that I'm like really jazzed about enough to sit down and watch the con. I can't think of any, honestly, any developer that I'm like, I'm so excited for this game that you're working on that I want to sit down and watch your conference in, you know, hoping to see something of it. What about Devolver Digital? There's always something crazy there. That, that's always worth a watch. Have you watched one of their conferences before, or do you do you avoid that sort of thing? Uh, I don't think I have, honestly. Oh, they're always crazy. They're fantastic. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm aware. I'm just, I'm just trying to. Cause they're, the, they're the Hotline Miami guys, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Anything yeah, yeah. sort of indie and out there is probably them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I have. I, you know, now that you bring it up, I'm not trying to remember the last time I actually sat down and watched a just a developer presentation i don't know oh well see i i love watching them and then all these games that are that are going to come and then look nothing like they do on stage running through the high-end pc demo oh it's fantastic but anyway listeners yeah. obviously we're referencing e3 coming next week this podcast will probably drop potentially actually after it starts uh i think on the monday so probably after the microsoft conference but if you're interested and you've been living under a rock uh of course ea play this year ea doing no conference but instead doing a more Multitude of streaming, streaming of their games, even Anthem somewhere. Apparently, we will wait and see on that one. So that that's starting from uh, tomorrow our time, I suppose, on June the eighth and running through the weekend. Then Microsoft, of course, the big one on uh, Monday at. I'm looking at the American times for some reason, so we'll just go with that. I don't know why. At uh, it says 10 p.m. CEST. So there you go. Like if you live in that time zone, 10 p.m. That's kind of late. But if you're in Australia which is all that really matters. It's on at 6 a.m., so that'll be an early rise for you. Then Bethesda is straight after that one. Then Devolver Digital. Then the next day uh, we have Ubisoft, 
Ubisoft, sorry, uh, Square Enix and Nintendo Direct the day after that. So I'm sure there's something for everyone. Uh, as we all know, there is no Sony presence this year. Well, no official Sony presence, but it will be interesting to see if they, they drop something in. Make sure you reach out to me and let me know if you're interested in that. And I'm just going to do a little shameless promotional plug of my own, but because we're not a Microsoft podcast, I'm not going to obviously reference that conference anymore, but I will be doing a, a guest appearance. We're putting together a panel on Proven Gamer just for that Microsoft conference. I believe it's going to be recorded directly afterwards and come out later in the week. So I'll link to that on our Twitter. It won't be under our name. Uh, it'll be under a different different podcast name. I'm not sure who yet. But if you have any interest in Microsoft and you want to hear four relatively uninformed people that try to be funny talk about Microsoft, then come and uh, come over and have a <laughs> listen. So sorry, Mindy, to do that shameless plug. You, how many how many different accents are on that podcast <laughs> well i think it's going to be three americans and myself and i have a feeling that possibly i guess from last week that one seagull will be there because he's a pc player as well well i'm not 100 percent sure on that what the lineup is exactly yet so yeah no all, all americans you, you know that i love talking to americans you know <laughs> i mean well, david, Bo- david bowie was afraid of him so yes <laughs> well i'm definitely not david bowie unfortunately that was a joke. It's the name of a song he sang. <laughs> uh, that, that is fantastic. So shall we shall we move along, Minty? Because I know we have an exciting episode. We've got a lot to talk about today. Why don't we jump in first off, though, to what you have been playing? What I have been playing? Well. Yes. I'm trying to remember the last time I came on. I think the last time I came on, I talked about, like, my big sister and um, A Secret of Mana, right? Mm-hmm. So that was like a month ago. Uh, since then, I've played uh, Call of Cthulhu. Now tell me about this game. This is a Lovecraftian. Is this correct? It is, and it's not the one. It's not the one that we spoke of. I read something about a Lovecraftian inspired game that was coming out or had just recently come. That's not that game. This mm-hmm. is another game like that that came out. Oh, when did it come out? Came out last last year like probably around halloween it's it's mostly an adventure game and it's just a kind of third atmospheric puzzle solving light combat one of those kind of things um it's not it's not bad (laughs) that's that's a ringing endorsement (laughs) well it's not it's it's not bad but it's also not there there's nothing to really make it stand out like, I kind of felt that way about Thief, like the, the reboot of Thief. People would ask, because I've, I, you know, I've played it twice, actually. So mm-hmm. I, uh, I would tell people, like, it's not, it's not awful. It's not brilliant. It's just really middle of the line. And that's the most tragic thing about it. Like, it's, it's really just painfully average, but there's this one stage that's mm-hmm. really good. <laughs> and it's the one, that's in the mental asylum. And if you played thief, you know, if you've played the thief reboot, you know what I'm talking about and you know, it's good, but the rest of it is just, I don't know if it's like game design by committee or what, but it's just so average. And I kind of felt that way about this, this game, this call of Cthulhu. It's not bad. It's, it's got some pretty good atmosphere, but at some point I'm just kind of like, ah, just, uh, just end (laughs) yeah actually yeah i was kind of like how is this still going how long is this game can i ask longer than you'd think (laughs) it's definitely gonna be longer than i longer than you think not as but i think not as long as they needed it seems like it's it's, again it's one of those games that kind of feels like it ran out of money or they cut out a lot of stuff because there's you know crafting of the story and at some point you're just like wait what 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 did I just miss or what did I yeah what just happened you know where's the shift and, and of course it's the story is is very obvious you know that's one of the things that I was disappointed in was the story was really kind of obvious so it's it's kind of sitting there and waiting for the characters in the game to catch up to what I've already figured out you know or what most people will have already figured out and that's never a, it's just never a fun thing to do. Talk to me about the trophies in this game. I understand a lot is missable. Is that is that correct? Uh, yeah. 
yes, maybe half of the half of the list. That having been said, only one or two of them are, are like game spanning, and there is, I believe, is there chapter select? I think there's there's like stage select, but there is over on um, PlayStationTrophies.org. There is a maybe there's not chapter select. No, there's no chapter select. Uh, but there is a there is a step by step walkthrough, text walkthrough, on um, PlayStationTrophies.org. So if you just follow that, you're fine. Um, it's not a difficult game. Wait, you know, wait, wait for wait for a sale. Do not pay more than probably 15 20 bucks for this game actually i was just going to jump in there but listeners i'm not sure if it's still on offer but this uh this game was actually on the double uh discounts store sale i think on the na or the eu or possibly both so uh, it is actually on sale uh, i'm not sure if it'll still be on sale hopefully by the time this goes out but if that interests you maybe it is the time to pick it up i think it's about 50 percent off yeah that's not bad because i think it's still retailing at like 40 yeah well, that's quite expensive yeah perfect what else what else what else? What else have I been playing? Um, let's see. Oh, uh, so The Last Door came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is something you did talk about on, on one of the podcasts. It's this really low-res uh, atmospheric point-and-click horror game set in Victorian England. And it's actually really good. It's got a really good story. I played it on PC um, while it was coming out. It's a Kickstarter game. So it's this it's this game studio of like f- like five or six guys in I think Spain, maybe Argentina. And so they just kickstarted seasons of it, quote seasons. And each season had five episodes and they just kickstarted individual episodes. And so they took both seasons and um you know, poured it onto PS4, which currently has an unobtainable platinum. Yeah. <laughs> Fun, fun. <laughs> but they are they are working on a patch. Well, we got it better than Xbox. Over on um, mm-hmm. Xbox, the the achievements don't even un- uh, show up at all. Oh wow! Okay. Whereas on PlayStation, uh, and apparently I'm the first person to complain about the PlayStation one because probably I'm the first one who played it. Because when I when I tweeted the devs, they said we're aware of the problem on Xbox, and I said, but I'm on PS4, and that's what i said (laughs) Mm -hmm. that these these specific trophies are not unlocking well it's good to see they're not biased in their their glitching (laughs) and i have um i've actually been in contact with the one person who have earned who has earned more of the trophies in the game than i have Mm -hmm. because she has unlocked uh one of the trophies that i thought was glitched so I don't know what happened there. I think they might have changed the timing of some things from the PC version. Yeah, so I don't know. So it sounds like a work in progress, this game. Well, I mean, it's... For you, I should say. not, not It is. Yes, it's a work in progress. Um, but it looks like both of the find all the notes... Or actually, there's three of them. Find all the notes slash books, whatever, trophies are uh, are bugged as of right now. On both versions of the game, because there's okay. there's two stacks. So it might be worth holding off on that one. Yeah, and it's a shame, too, because it's actually a really good game. It really is. Mm. If if you're a graphics person, you really need to get past the graphics, because it is very low res. It's and by design. But it's a good story. Mm. Would it be presumptuous of me to assume you may be working on a guide at some point for this game? Uh, yeah, I am working on a guide. Uh, yeah. It's about three quarters done, actually. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I think we'll all eagerly anticipate that. <laughs> and let's see what else. I, I got back into Red Dead Redemption 2 for a bit. Yes. What do you think of that game? Are you enjoying it? I, I'm bored. Mm, I hear that a lot. I enjoyed it to to a point. And then I'm just like, I'm I'm bored. Like, there's there's too much bloat. Like, you finish the game and you still got two hours of story left. Yes, yeah. Ha, ha, where Are you up to that point? Like, have you finished the story or are you in, in the story? Or? I haven't quite I haven't quite finished it, but I know what happens. Okay, well, please don't tell me. <laughs> I won't. Oh, okay, I won't. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, silly, silly me, assuming you actually played something that long. Well, uh, look, you know, I actually started this game on Xbox and then I got an hour in it and I just didn't like it at all. And then... 
I don't know. I thought I'd come back to it potentially. So, yeah, I don't know. What's the online like? Have you done any of the online stuff? Not yet. I I, I need to do open to the online. Because my understanding is that can be done separate to the story, I think, like at any time. But... Yes, and it was it was that way for um, the first one as well. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I, I will. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe I will bump into you online one day in that game. <laughs> Maybe we can even organize that. It won't be random. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think I'll be very good at it, though. Can you shoot your own horse in this game? Uh, y- yes. I always enjoy doing Question that. Question mark? I've never tried because I like my horse. That's usually one of the first things I try. I'll, I'll have to jump back in and I see. Leveled up, I leveled up my horse to be awesome. Your horse does go poo randomly. Yeah. I don't know. Any mm-hmm. game that involves leveling up a horse, I think that's a big commitment. I'm not sure that I'm ready for that. I'll need to... It takes about 15 minutes. It doesn't oh, okay. Take all that long. We're not talking JRPG horse then. Yes. Okay. Oh, Jesus, no. <laughs> That's all right then. <laughs> you don't have to go find special equipment. You just got to pet your horse and feed it and not let it die and you're you're golden yeah okay that's cool look it would be remiss of me not to ask but back in 1995 yeah played that one please tell me uh Mm, i see yeah i don't know there was a there was a 15 minute period where i liked it and uh because the way this game works Mm -hmm. is you have to play it twice there's two endings and it's one of those games that you can't get the the real ending until you've played through once right and there's this period of gameplay between finishing the game and starting the game over that I really liked. And I, I have to say this without spoiling stuff. Because I thought the game was going in, in a direction that I had not expected. And then I realized, oh, it's not at all, actually. This is just kind of a self-indulgent thing. And I I get what this game is supposed to be. I understand that this this developer like really liked the original Silent Hill or the ori- original Resident Evil, like those kind of tank control, blocky, bad camera angle, slow enemy, slow combat. I get that. And I get that that's what the developer was trying to do. I just I I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> so look, I, I, I've got to ask: Are we are we on the? Uh, is is this worth playing for the story, or is this worth playing with a guide as spam? It's a spam game. Yeah. Oh, oh, excellent! Great news. Well, that's lucky because there's a ridiculous number of stacks for that as well. So there's six plats waiting for you. Yeah. Guide. Let me let me put it to you this way: It is a spam game, and it still took me eight hours to platinum because I was bored. Well, I thought you might. You probably were doing it legit. I know you. You're not like the rest of us. Well, I started it. I started it legit and very, very quickly. I was like, oh, wow. No. Well, if you did that, then I will definitely go straight to the guide. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. Enough said of that, obviously. Now, look, I'm, look, this ne- these next four, fantastic. Just fantastic. As I said to you the other day, you must have a lot of willpower, I think. Would you, would you like to let our listeners in on this? Yeah, so I'm on a telltale bench. Um, because as I'm sure people know, Telltale closed. More recently, uh, their games have been delisted from digital distributors, from from Sony, from Microsoft, from Steam, etc., etc., etc. So the t- the timing of this is weird because I really did play. So the fir- the first thing I played after back in 1995 was the final season of The Walking Dead, um, and I actually did want to play it, which is good because. That is a game you actually have to play. This That is not a Telltale game that plays itself, right? Like all the other ones do. But while I was playing that, or just after I had finished, there was this, I think this official announcement on, I don't know if it was the official Minecraft site or like a really big fan site or, or what. And it kind of, in retrospect, sounds like the, the author just didn't understand how how this worked. But it basically said, you need to download all the episodes of Minecraft story mode by a certain date, I think the end of this month, um, or you will lose access to them forever. Um, and that of course got people very alarmed. And, and I thought, well, it probably does mean this probably is someone who doesn't understand that as long as you bought it, you know, you, you, you've got the hidden download page, but just in case, 
You know, I did Minecraft story mode like two years ago, um, but I never did the DLC because I was waiting for a sale on the um, on the expansion or the um, what is it called? The adventure pass. And I I bought the adventure pass at some point. Um, I don't know when. So I I um, was like, well, let's just, let's just get that done. So I have that completed, done and dusted. That's quite long too, isn't it? Like there's there's another three episodes, was it, in the Adventure Pass or? Yeah, it it was. Mm-hmm. Um, which is is funny because there is nothing to that game. Like no. it's <laughs> Tales of Jesse, right? <laughs> they kind of they kind of ran out of story halfway through the base game. Anyway, so it 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 just it just so happened that when this announcement came out, I was playing The Walking Dead: The Final Season. And I, I wanted to play that game, which, which is good because it's a game you do actually have to uh, play. It does, not, it does not play itself like most of the other um, Telltale games. So <laughs> probably about, I don't know, a quarter of the way through that game, I realized I had not actually played season three of The Walking Dead. I was so sure I had, and I had not. So I thought, oh, there's another Telltale game I have to play. <laughs> And then, and then I realized, oh, oh, there was a second, there was a second season of Batman. I haven't played that either. I might as well just go for broke right now and play. Because I, I have in some way or another, just from various sales, I have all of them. I Minecraft story mode and Guardians of the Galaxy. I will admit to doing a, a GameStop rental. I have played in the last four days i have played the dlc for minecraft story mode telltale guardian of the galaxy minecraft story mode season two and i am three episodes into i'm about to start the fourth episode of of walking dead season three you know if if telltale had seen this sort of love you know what a year ago they'd probably still be with us today jesus christ dude No, I had to actually, here's the funny thing. I actually did a trophy spam game between Minecraft Story Mode Season 2 and Walking Dead Season 3 just to break it up. By the way, that was Warlock's Tower. Um, Up, down, left, left, up, up, down, C. Mm. (laughs) But at least these are all Telltale games that play themselves. So I've actually, it hasn't been too terrible because I've just been sitting and playing Picross and every, about every five minutes I look up at the screen to see if I need to actually do anything. And generally the answer is no. I actually, in Gardens of the Galaxy, there was a span of time where I didn't have to do anything. And I realized that I had unlocked three trophies <laughs> before I actually had to do anything. Uh... It was like the end of, it was like the end of episode, whatever. And then the first two trophies of the next episode, I didn't have to do anything. So please rank for me. Which one out of the ones that you played? Which one did you enjoy the most out of these four you've played? One, two, three, four, five. You're playing, sorry, at the moment. So I actually enjoyed The Walking Dead the final season. I did. Yeah. yeah good. So without are, spoiling you, are you counting that one? Because like I yeah, actually yeah. wanted to play that one. Of course. Can I ask without spoiling it? Because I haven't played it yet. Is it a good ending? Like, is it a? Are you? Is it a conclusion to the story? The, the Walking Dead. The final one. Yeah. It it is a conclusion. Yes. Mm. Oh, good. Okay. I have mixed feelings about the ending. Okay. Yeah. But well, I will not go into spoilers, no. but I think at some point, yeah. maybe that's something to talk about. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I'll book that in for uh, 2032 when I get around <laughs> to that. Excellent. <laughs> maybe I better get a physical edition, perhaps. <laughs> I, you know, what's funny is I actually have the physical edition because I got it on sale for like 20 bucks. You are sick. But, well, but the final season isn't on, isn't oh, on is the it? physical edition. It's like oh. every it's like everything but that. It's it's one, two, three, four hundred days and um But it says the Walking Michonne. Dead the final season disc. Oh that. Well there's that and then yes. there's the the Walking Dead the complete collection. Oh yes. Which is that's all right. of those complete. games under a new platinum. That's right. Yeah, that's a big, big effort for one platinum, that is. It really is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so is Red Dead Redemption too. That's, well <laughs> that's right. At least there's no horse left. And that game you. that game don't play itself, <laughs> so yeah, that's it. Yes, the turbo controller can't help me out there, huh? <laughs> no. I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble. Yeah, okay, cool, excellent. Do you think there's any chance you will be stacking the final season disc version? I know there is another stack. Well, there's also there's also the digital stacks, you'll remember. Oh, that's right. 
Yeah, there's two of those as so well. So there's the it? disc stacks and the and the digital stacks. Uh, could you imagine doing this game four times? That's crazy. <laughs> I'm sure someone has. Crazy. Look, I'm sure they have too. Yeah, shout out to whoever you are. I mean, I, I would not say that I wouldn't stack it, but I'm not actively looking to stack it. Like if those trophies would be useful for, you know, some sort of trophy event, mm. then yeah, I'll stack it. Yeah. Um, well, as you say, you can, you can but, play something else while it's playing. So, at times, yeah. no, not not the final season. You actually have to play. Oh, the final sorry, season. not the final. Oh, okay. There's more gameplay. Okay, yeah, but the other ones. Yeah, there's more gameplay, and almost everything is missable. Oh, fantastic! Almost all of the trophies are missable. Excellent, sir. Um, so you them. really have to play this game. Okay, yeah, that, that's cool. That's cool. Well, look, I'll, I'll have to play it sometime because I would love to see how how it all ends. <laughs> Clem story. Yeah. I'm glad that you're playing the third one after you played the last one as well. That's that's good. <laughs> that'll, that'll really flesh out the story for you. Well, it's it's not so. There's there's a this really isn't spoiling thing, but there's like there's flashbacks to this place in in season in the oh, final season. I see. And so I was like, oh, cool. This is what's happening during the time you know yes. the time jump from from the last game. Makes it. I love when games do that. It's very accessible later in the series. Well, because the end of season two, it's it's Clementine and a baby, right? Yes. yes and yeah. final season, it's like Clementine and now the baby's like eight, like mm. six or six or eight. Yes, time has passed. Yeah, so it's kind of like, oh, cool, we're getting like a little glimpse into what happened. Mm. And mm. then I realized, oh, wait a minute, the baby was not at the end of se- of season three. It was at the end of season two. Did I play mm. season three? Like, am I actually just watching flashbacks to the last game? <laughs> it's, all, it's all becoming a blur. See, it's what happens when you do so much Telltale at once. But I didn't. I haven't played a Telltale. Prior to this, I have not played a Telltale game since a, a, a long time. Like, <laughs> Yes, well, I think, I think a lot of people are with you there. Yeah. Like almost a year? Yeah. It's been mm. since I've played a Telltale game? That's good. Well, there you go, listeners. I mean, you know, if, if you're in a panic about that, you know, jump on it if you're not, whatever. Yeah. Look, you know, I, I would have to ask now. <laughs> have something Have something else to yes, do. Yes. Yes. Maybe remove the knives from your house or any loose ropes or nooses before you start. That's not that bad. <laughs> Minecraft story mode is that bad. That game is boring. Season two is super yeah, boring. I didn't mind season one. But season there is two. nothing. To, it is. It is nothing. No. At least, you know, the other ones have story. This one is just like, I, yeah. maybe you'll like it more if, if you're like really into Minecraft, but I can't imagine, you know, because it's more, it's more kind of vignettes than like a super cohesive, it's vignettes trying to be a cohesive story. And that's no bueno. So look, it would be remiss of me not to ask for the listeners, but at, you know, earlier in the year when we started off uh, the podcast and you joined us, you told us that your your aim for this year was your PS3 backlog. Uh, I'm just looking <laughs> through here. Yeah. How's that going for you? <laughs> yeah, haven't touched it. <laughs> There's a lot of fours on your list here. PS4, PS4. Yes. Yeah. Three well, years at this point. actually, I think I think I'm going to be kicked started into uh, actually doing it because the uh naughty dog is switching off their servers next month aren't they ah for uncharted yes for uncharted and the last of us and while i'm thankfully i am good at uncharted by the way people if you are like a completionist and you think you can clean up the uncharted the uncharted two trophies you've probably got a shot at uncharted three you do not that's a massive grind that one isn't it massive like i i've even if you were a team of people and you, all you did was play every minute, every hour, every day until the servers closed. I do not think you could get all those trophies. I really don't. But for some reason, I am missing one Last of Us multiplayer trophy. Do you want to take a guess which one that is? <laughs> well, considering I never looked at the multiplayer in The Last of Us, I would have no idea. Is all it right. a leveling trophy? So your answer should be the most obvious and easy one of them to unlock because oh. that would be the answer. Oh, okay. Well, you should do that then. Yeah. The trophy I am missing is win a game of supply raid and survivors in find match. The trophy is called knowing the basics. Here's what I don't understand. I, it, this has to have been glitched on me because there are trophies for 
completing the Firefly journey, which is a multiplayer, and beating the and completing the Hunter journey, which is part of the multiplayer. It's involves uh, reaching certain milestones on the multiplayer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I did this in boosting groups, and there are certain points where it is an all or nothing thing. Like you have to meet this goal or you will end your journey and have to start it over. Right. Okay. Yeah. So in a boosting group, what you do is you say, Hey, I have hit this point. I need you guys to band together and let me do this. Right. So I don't die and start over. I cannot imagine that I got through both of those trophies without winning one match in both game modes. <laughs> yeah, well, for you, I can I can see you just you know that stuns you, but for me, that that would be highly possible. <laughs> no, it, it it no, it seems literally impossible to happen, and yet well, it has happened to me. I define logic somehow, which makes me think it's glitched. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I hope it unglitches itself. But all of the other multiplayer trophies, all the DLC stuff, I got that. I boosted that, th- Jesus, three years ago, four years ago. So this ago. is the last trophy you need in the game or the last in the multiplayer? No, it's the last trophy I need from the multiplayer. Okay. Okay. I still have to do uh, Survival Plus on the campaign. Well, it sounds like a good time to be doing it. It sounds like a lot of people will be will be playing it as well then if the servers are coming down. Yeah, so right. Good luck with uh, winning a game, I suppose, there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I just need to delete the whole thing and reinstall it or what. I don't know. Oh, I mean, you could just leave it. Just, just, just retire it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. Maybe it's, an, it's, an, it's obviously not an ultra rare trophy. So, I mean, it really has, you know, limited value, I suppose. But, you know, if 100% uh, is that close, why not? But. I think that I think that'll push me into doing my PS3. Yeah, backlog. well, look, I look forward to seeing um, a three on your list at good. some point, anytime, anytime. Yeah, maybe a, maybe yeah. a Vita to break it up. Yeah. But enough okay. enough of my nonsense. Let's talk about what you've been not playing. Thank you. You know, look, I always enjoy talking to you about what I have not been playing, and I tell you what, there are more zero percents this week than ever. I think so. We just won't talk about any of those because look, at, I don't even know what that is. My goodness, Warhammer Chaos Bay. Wow, well, look, that is why you should not be on the PS Store after you've had a few glasses of wine. But anyway, look, I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about that one next week. So why, why don't we talk about something I Do actually... Do you actually buy games drunk? Because that's kind of no, that, sad that, and also that, hilarious. That would be uh, irresponsible. No, I, I'm interested in this Warhammer Chaos Bane, actually, to some degree. I started... The reason I'm interested is I actually started Divinity uh, Original Sin 2 uh, the other day. And again, it's a massive time sink, that game. So I just wasn't sure. And... I know there's, there are obviously different games than Warhammer games, but there are some similarities as well. So I thought it might be a way to ease myself into it because it is a shorter game. I mean, if you're going for the plot, I understand it's very grindy, but if you're just going to play through like the story, which is, is all I would be doing with Divinity as well, mm-hmm. um, it, it might be a good... Uh, I, I haven't played a lot of these isometric type games. Uh, well, not recently anyway. So it'd be a nice way to maybe ease myself back into it. So that, that was the sort of theory mm-hmm. behind it. But anyway, you know, let, let's throw out some stuff I have played. And I'm going to start with a VR game because I, I briefly dabbled with VR again until I to get the sick bucket for a while but the first one or perhaps the one i'll mention today is this box vr which i still think has an unfortunate name this is the boxing simulator i suppose fitness simulator for vr and it is good it's a little pricey as well i understand but it is it is quite good uh it it, in some ways it was described to me as a like a, a a beat saber i suppose for boxing and it's sort of like that it's it's definitely not as difficult as that or um it doesn't you know progress in that way and I'm just sorry. I'm just trying to think of that. Yeah. Well, so it's like a rhythm. It's like a rhythm boxing. Yeah, it game? is. Like they've done. There's a series of workouts, if you like, that have been tailored by these these fitness professionals, and they yeah they've timed it to the music as as well the the tracks they've used. So it, it it does play in a way like a rhythm game. I think the point of it is is for fitness. Like it tracks your calories burned, um, you know, you, you, all that sort of stuff. I'm not, again, I'm not 100 percent sure how accurate it is because obviously you're not hitting the bag with boxing. You're just hitting the air. 
burn 10,000 calories, gold trophy. Yeah, and so it tracks all of that. And there, there are a lot of workouts to choose from. So you, you can start from like two-minute basic ones right up to some of the, the design ones are 45 minutes or an hour. And I, I know there is a trophy for uh, designing your own workout as well. So you can potentially add it, – it's sort of the workouts are tied to the songs. So when you do that uh, to design your own workout, you just – you pick a series of songs that you want. You can pick whichever ones. And they already have the predetermined moves. You, you don't get to set the moves as well. Uh, there. I mean, if, if you're looking at it from a trophy perspective, it is a pretty easy list. I, I think in some ways, you know, I mean, it, of course, it would be tied a little bit to personal fitness because, you know, if you're a little unfit, perhaps the, the thousand calories in 24 hour trophy could be a little bit difficult because just to give you a rough idea, I think I played for well, maybe an hour and a half or so. And I think I did about 600 calories, maybe seven. So it's a lot different to working out at the gym. You know, you're going to burn a lot less again, I think, because the resistance, you know, you're only hitting the air and stuff like that. But having said that, you definitely can build a sweat with this. I definitely did. And I was grooving away with it. I thought that the music choices are great uh, throughout as well. So, you know, I think it's one of those games you just sort of maybe chip away at. I mean, that's the point of it with the, the fitness element, I suppose. And you would naturally mm-hmm. get all the trophies. The the hit uh, 100 cues in a row is, is not difficult. And the 500 cues that would not be difficult either i had a little there's really only two moves you got your like your left and your right and then your hook and your jab the, the hook and the jab just the getting the getting the feel of where that is in response to the camera just takes a little bit so it probably took me an hour to get that sort of confidence so i'm pretty pretty confident next time i play i can hit that 500 one i don't think that would be be too difficult and there is there is a bit of ducking as well so you've got a bit of knee action there but it does have an option to do the game without the ducking so if your knees are no good you know if you've been lifting too many weights at the gym and you and you fucked your knee then this maybe is an alternative uh to that sort of stuff so i'm quite enjoying in that game and it runs very smooth there's no motion sickness obviously because you're, you're stationary in that that game so that could be be one to look out for if you if you like a little bit of um you know activity with your your vr or whatever else mm-hmm. and then uh, looks like looks like you also played a little bit of FNAF VR. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes, sorry, <laughs> very little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I know I know the debate was is this spam or not. So you have more of an idea of an answer uh, than no, I don't think it's spam at all. Uh, I, I think it's. It, it, potentially, it could be done quickly. I think if you'd played the games before maybe and you you had a good strategy but i think there's also unlocking uh things that just come through a number of games and i also think like the percentages are very low aren't they even now yeah like wow still very low actually um across and that's not that's not hugely uncommon though because it is a vr exclusive game yeah 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 you know so the percentages are still going to be fairly low for vr games yeah i'm just looking it's two to three days people some people have kind of been you know one in one in ten there are a hundred about a little over a hundred owners and ten of them have gotten the platinum yeah, oh, d- definitely attainable yeah. so that's not you know that's not like what is it what is that game night <sighs> crypt crypto <sighs> Damn. a vr game or is that the one i'm thinking of the... oh the necromancer yeah. Yeah, so Night of the Crypto talking. Dancer or something you're like that. About the very hard crypt- game. Or Crypt of Crypt of the Necro Dancer. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. it is. A necromancer thing, yeah. No, no, no. This is this is nothing like difficulty like that. No, 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 definitely not. No. I th- I think this is the difficulty only comes in this mm-hmm. thing that you've just got to play like to complete the prize counter. So that's just a matter of playing enough games. So I suppose it's more of a time thing. Not not a difficulty thing. And if you've played these games before, I think it's very easy. It's 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 okay for what it is. I think it's overpriced at the moment. So maybe a little bit of a cash grab. I'd probably wait on it. Isn't it like uh, 40 bucks? Yeah, and I think it could probably be 20, uh, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. So with it, but you know, look, there, there's, well, I mean, there's content, you, you know, we all know what the game is roughly. So there's content there, you know, or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's the same sort of thing over and over. It's sort of, I mean, it's not, as far as horror goes, it's not, you're not going to, like, there is a trophy for getting a jump scare. But, you know, I don't think you're going to move your head in any way when it gets you. Like, it, it's not very terrifying. I didn't find it myself. I Like, I, look, I only played it for like 20 minutes, but I didn't really find it that intense or anything else. 
yeah, compared to some VR uh, horror games. So it's good. I mean, it would be a great party game as well. It's a demonstration to people for VR or whatever. Again, no motion sickness because it's very stable. Um, you're in a fixed position or whatever with only limited range. So, you know, if that if that interests you, by by all means, yeah, go on. Mm-hmm. With it. I don't know. Like, uh, I maybe just throw out this Death End Request game. I don't know if you've ever heard of this game. I was going to ask you. It's a visual novel, right? Well, it's like a Neptunia game. I don't know if you've played any of those, like, Hyper Dimension type games and uh oh, i'm familiar yeah, with them games. now yeah so you know total weeb uh sort of game it's it is a lot more of a visual novel than i expected in fact probably 90 percent of the game is visual visual novel and the other 10 percent is like dungeon crawler so th- mm. there's a huge amount of, of text there like you can skip if you want on um, personally i'm not you know i'm not sure that there would be much point you don't really have no idea what's going on the story is good it, it's sort of like you know this idea that that a little bit like a, a little bit like sort out online in a way that you know someone's trapped in the in the virtual world or whatever else and there's people on the outside you know and and, and the person on the inside so you sort of you can play a little bit as both but the the, the main gameplay is centered on the, the dungeon crawling with the person inside the sort of VR world that's trapped we won't sort of say any more than that or it would spoil it the game is potentially very easy it has three difficulty levels you can play on easy normal is kind of challenging though I found I actually dropped the difficulty down uh, on one of the boss fights too easy which really? made it yeah, it made it ridiculous. Well, with a lot of these games, there's a lot of different attacks and, you know, strategy involved. And I think if you understood that, it would be quite easy. But when mm-hmm. you're, you know, I don't have a full grasp of, of all the different attacks yet. So, and and I don't, you know, I get a little frustrated. On, on a narrative heavy, heavy game, I prefer just to keep going with the narrative. I do the fight once maybe. I don't, I don't really want to do it a few times. I just want to keep going with the story. So if, if you put it on easy, it's very simple. There are, um, there's a fantastic guide on uh, PlayStation trophies as well for this game, written fairly recently, I think, as of, of March, because there are a lot of, I think it's something like, 40 different endings or something a lot of them are like visual novel bet was that one of was that one of germain's he writes good good guides sure. it's a very good guide because it lists it, it's a good guide because it tells you how to get the bad endings in each chapter without with just giving you the text line where it comes up so you don't it doesn't spoil it in any way so you know what to sort of look out for so so on that side it, it's very simple it, you can save fairly regularly as well so you know you, you sort of get your bad ending and reload the save so so that's quite easy the the gameplay it, it's lower graphic quality uh in the actual dungeon crawling part but the 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 visual novel side is quite good uh on the other side and that game mm-hmm. is also on sale uh recently on, on this um double uh discount sale it was like half price or might have even been 60 percent off it was quite a quite a deep sale on that one so it's quite good if you like those games i'd sort of it strikes me a little bit as like this is a bit of a out there throwback uh, to some people i suppose but the um the cyber dimensions uh game um that came out the goddess uh for, uh, for goddess uh, cyber dimension game that came out uh, a little while ago in multiple stacks around the place it's probably a little bit less production value and less gameplay than that but if you like that you definitely like uh this one i think so that's good then you know a little bit a little bit of spam in there as well you know, no need to talk maybe the only other other major one i'll mention is this effie i don't know have you seen anything about this mindy effie a little bit but not much so go ahead and and talk about it. by the way that guide was written by saint germain so shout out to him because he writes you yeah. know as much as i'm a like known for point like for um writing jrpg guides he's pretty good at it yeah yeah, he's looked very good, you know, spoiler free yeah, and, and very well set out. So, yeah, that, that guy is, is fantastic. Yeah. But look, this Effie, I think this is a game you would enjoy. It's a, I mean, I suppose in a way it's loosely a platformer. You could say, you know, sort of, oh, you know, a little bit of a hack and slashy at times as well. I mean, maybe a puzzler, although the puzzles are very simple. Throughout it, it's, you know, an indie title to a degree, maybe like a sort of in-between title. It's it, it's one of these games that plays with like a, a voiceover n- narrator, if you like, that sort of cracks some jokes that aren't hugely funny, I, I think, or maybe that's just my sense of, of humour. Maybe maybe it's just a little too G-rated for me. I, I'm not sure. But look, the game plays well. It's not floaty. It is kind of beautiful in, you know, in a basic colour scheme uh, style of way. I understand there's a guide for it up as well. I so I think it's actually not that long, uh, maybe in the, the six-hour range or so. But I, I do quite enjoy it. Again, I'm only sort of through the first world and into the next section, but it sort of plays like an intro, then a main hub, and I think there's three worlds that go off it. Uh, so that side of thing. It's got this really cool mechanic where you can ride a surfboard, uh, like a hover surfboard, if you like, um, above the ground and stuff to get around as well. So it's it's quite fun. And look, A that- hoverboard. 
like yeah. Marty McFly. Well, he well it is a hoverboard, but there's actually a trophy I think that that refers to it as a surfboard. Like get the maximum speed. Ah, uh, yeah, get the reach the maximum speed surfing. So, so it's sort of like I suppose it could be a hoverboard that you surf on. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it sort of looks like a surfboard. I like that it's reach the maximum speed surfing, and the trophy picture is of a dude running. Yes, that's, it is. Like good. I get that it's meant to be speed, but like you, yeah. you think that would be a surfboard. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of those. Like, I think it's a really encouraging game. Like, I was looking at the the uh, Inverge Studios their their website there, and it, like, it's a, a really encouraging sign. I think, I, I think that the voiceover narrative it could have been, it just could have been a little bit more. It was almost, it almost feels like they're playing a little bit too safe. Like, almost like I'm, I'm considering I might just mute it and just not listen to it. It, it doesn't. I don't know. It, yeah, I, I would like more. Like, uh, I think the problem is at the moment I'm also playing some of this. Uh, uh, Trover's uh, game uh, in VR. Uh, I don't know if, if you know or if you've heard anything about this. Trover saves the the universe. There we go. And it operates on the same system, you know, of sort of a voice narrative dropping in and then a character. And the humor in that is just off the wall, like South Park, you know, style. Like you know, humor. Uh, sorry, you say drop in voice narrative, like like icy, like when the narrator comes in and yeah, 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 yeah. It's not as I mean that that's all there is in Effie, but in in Trover, there's a little bit of that, and then some of it comes from the other characters as well so it's a little bit bit more balanced but I mean the humor in that game is just it's fantastically off the wall I mean the language in that game is off the wall as well every second word is a, is a curse word or something but I, I think that game it really it, it know it leans into what it's trying to do with the, the voiceovers and the dialogue because you know it, it, in some ways it's a very mm-hmm. similar game it's also a platformer uh, you know a, a sort of indie indie style game so I, I don't know maybe Effie is the family version of that you know if you've got kids so is Effie is Effie your character or is Effie the old Dude. uh that <laughs> that's in all the like oh uh, now that is the old dude i believe <laughs> actually i you haven't played long enough no, to I find have that played, you I haven't been paying like, attention have... or they just haven't revealed no it. they they would have revealed it i'm pretty sure that's his i i didn't take a huge a lot of notice in that to be honest it's mm-hmm. one of those games where it, it, I don't really know what the story is yet. Like the voiceover is just sort of, as I said, cracking some jokes and just telling you how what's going on. But I'm not sure what the overall purpose is. I've just met this ice queen thing, you know, that, that's obviously going to be the, nem- the nemesis or the, the bad bad uh, bad girl, I suppose, for the you'll be battling throughout the the game. But yeah, look, I I don't know. I'll keep going and I'll, I'll let you know more about it. But I did see that it was out on the store and I imagine it will get uh, perhaps minimal love because not a lot of people know about it. But, you know, if you're, if you're and it's not a, not an expensive game. I think it's like $20 or something uh, in that vicinity. So, you know, it, it could be a little bit of fun with a, with a, with a stab at, you know, I think if, if that sort of thing interests you. CJ, there, there's not a single part of me that believes that you're going to keep playing it long enough to answer my questions. <laughs> well, you know, like I'm in a real bind because I just don't know what I want to play at the moment like work is starting to slow down and in a couple of weeks I'm going to have a month off so I sort of I, I sort of want to commit to a long game but I'm in a real bind because uh, the Final Fantasy 14 uh, expansion comes out at the end of this month so uh, is a huge possibility that I'm going to get sucked into that pretty hard um, and not finish anything major if I start it now but then I wanted to start something, so I actually started the Assassin's Creed. I know it's not showing on my list because I got the first trophy ages ago. And then Which one, Odyssey? One, about, yeah, yeah, it takes about five hours. And, like, I love Assassin's Creed games. I, I've platinum, I think, from Syndicate up to now. So, you know, and I, I've sort of been waiting because this game has a lot of DLC as well. I've, uh, episodes I've platinumed whatnot, all of them so. except for Odyssey. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I mean, are you interested in playing Odyssey or...? I am, and I want to. I actually have to clear out have to clear out all these damn Telltale games yeah. so I can install it. Yeah. Because Red Dead Redemption takes up a ton of space. Oh, I know. And I yeah. also perhaps foolishly downloaded Hitman Two. Oh. Um, yeah. And then I loaded on my Hitman One save file for that, so I could download all of those stages because there's trophies for those too. Yeah. So that took up a ton of space, and I don't want to have to download all that stuff again. No. So no. it's just hanging out on my PlayStation. Well, that see, I, I totally. It's you know, this is what people say. Like, how could you possibly fill up the hard drive? But some of these games are massive. Like, you could easily like hundred gigs plus. So you only need a couple of those games, and and it's full. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, like Red Dead Redemption is a two disc game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There's an install disc and a gameplay disc, and it's it's insane. Yeah. It's almost a hundred gigs of data. Yeah, 
on a what a 425 gig it says 500 but it's not it's like 425 430 gigs yeah look it fills up very and you know you get then save files and all that other stuff i mean some save files can be pretty big for some of these Mm -hmm. games you know if you have multiple save files too that adds up but yeah so i mean listeners that's sort of where i'm at you know and i sort of that's why i started divinity because i thought well maybe i'll i'll do this for the month then you know then i i you know, thought about Red Dead, perhaps, or I mean, I'll only do one of them. I know, uh, I know, Odyssey. a game that's perfect for you to commit to. That's long. You know, it's not spam. It's a little longer, and you actually have a shot of finishing it. <laughs> Please, not Minecraft. Windstorm. 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 Ari's arrival. Thirty-eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> long, CJ. That's long for you. Let's it, be honest. That's, I mean, that's that's a year long for me. Yeah. Well, look, I don't know. I'm not going to start that yet. So, you know. But look, look, Windstorm Ari's arrival. That is fun because you get to you get to pursue the German store if you're looking for that game. But you know, look, let's talk about that. You know, in the future when someone guides it and can actually knows about it, <clears throat> into it. Uh, there. But then, so all those games and then. Oh, that was subtle. That was subtle. Yeah, so of course, of course. I'm, I'm nothing if not if not subtle, I think. And swell, I'm told as well. I'm very swell. Uh, so, uh, then, 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 so you know, just I'm totally getting distracted here, listeners. Sorry, you can see the indecision in my voice, you know. You know. But then, so last night I'm all ready to play Odyssey and then I get a message about some dudes started uh, Tom Clancy's The Division 2 and would I like to come back to it? And I'm like, yeah, like, why not? So I played played that for a few hours. So who knows, maybe I'll go back to that because I did get a fair way in that and I quite enjoyed it. But I really need somebody else to play that game with and, and he seems very determined. And so maybe maybe we'll end up playing it together, Sir Digwig. Uh, you know. I was gonna say, is this that fr- is this, this that friend you met no, while playing it? No, I don't know. He's too far. He's too high level now. He's a, he's way above me. So I need to catch up again. I can't play with him. Uh, well, I can, but it, it, yeah, it, it makes it very difficult for me. So it would be better if I caught up a bit first. No, look, I don't know. Look, too many choices. You know what? What a wonderful position to be in. I suppose. Well, look, I'm not complaining. Yeah. And then, you know, there's another big sale coming next week too. So who knows what will happen there. But, but I think that's enough of what I've been playing. <laughs> it's probably more than enough. You played everything that came out last week, didn't you? Well, look, you know, I look, I've been on fire lately, I must admit. Yeah, but not everything. There's a couple of things Sony managed to squeeze past me. But, you know, not, not too many, <laughs> not too many. Uh, anyway, you know, that's that's enough of that. So, look, we're, we're, heading, we're heading very closely now towards the topic uh, this week, which is going to be about, uh, you know, digital digital games and, and the digital future, if you like. And that's going to be led by uh, Mindy because she has a, a great knowledge on that. Oh, no. Uh, better than myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, it has opinions on that. So, and I know it's a bit divisive at the moment, but just before we get there, uh, this, this happened earlier this morning. It took me by surprise. Now, I admit it happened very early here in Australia, so I have not seen it. I've just read the the notes on it and it was the the google stadia presentation so this this obviously comes you know just on the 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 front of e3 or whatever else and this is a you know whether whether you intend to use this service or not it's very interesting uh, and it potentially will become a game changer to to some degree i think and so they basically gave us a little bit more detail so if you you know if you haven't watched it or you're not interested in watching i'll just throw it at you so it was it was leaked that it's going to cost around ten dollars us per month there'll be no uh yearly subscription when it comes out in november but in 2020 when it rolls out further that will be an option there's also going to be a free option where you can just basically log into it and use it as a store a digital storefront if you like and not have access to the the library of games so the pricing on this will be very interesting what they price these games at also the games that are uh, that are available on launch now let's have a look here I, I don't think you know this mindy so i'm just going to run through these tell me if you think this is worth ten dollars a month so we've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3. Wow, that's a, that's a flashback and a half. Uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, which will be the new Ghost Recon. Uh, Doom Eternal, the div- I think the new one, yeah. Uh, Doom Eternal, The Division 2, Destiny 2, Tomb Raider Trilogy, uh, Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2, Wolfenstein, Youngblood, Metro Exodus, Football Manager 2020, Just Dance 2020, Rage 2, The Elder Scrolls Online, Thumper Grid, Borderlands 3, and Final Fantasy 15. It's quite a lot of games for $10 a month. What do you think? It is, but isn't this, it's a streaming console, right? Well, look, you know, it is. Yes, you'd, you'd have to have the internet to support this. And, and you don't own the games. No, you, you are just streaming them. Yes. Yeah. And also, it doesn't it doesn't launch until 2020, right? 
Well, no, this is the this is the launch list. This will launch in November, but I suppose some oh. of these it doesn't say that all these games will be available straight away. So but they will be coming, yes. Yeah. I don't know. You know, this it's not something I'm gonna buy like day one. I'd like to see how it goes. But yes, I, I feel definitely. like you know, I don't know. I feel like unless you live somewhere that got Google Fiber, like I think it's weird that Google stopped trying to do trying to push Google Fiber. Mm. I don't know. Like it, it's it's great that it's supposed to be a better streaming console than than PS4 or 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 Xbox, but that doesn't mean anything if your internet can't handle it. That's that's right. I mean, we have to see it in action first to really know as well. Yeah if their claims are true. Well, what interests me about this is like for $10, you know, a month, so Sony has no real equivalent at the moment, but, you know, that that may change. But, you know, on the on the Microsoft equivalent, of course, would be the Game Pass at the same price. Now, the Game Pass has a lot more content, but perhaps not as many of these new titles. So it will be interesting to see if Microsoft perhaps meet them with some of these games uh, in the future as well. Well, it sounds like they're doing what what PlayStation Now was supposed to be. Yes, yeah. Which was things launched simultaneously, streaming and retail. Unless I'm just misunderstanding this console, which I admit I could be because I have not paid much attention to it. Yeah, no, you're on the right, the right track. But the, the other thing that'll be interesting about this console is obviously you, you can buy a bundle when it comes up with a controller, which is, you know, about what a, what a controller would cost or whatever, and also the Chromecast to, to access it. But I suppose the sunken cost or the hidden cost is you, you would have to have a, a TV, but I mean, you know, technically you would, I mean, you have that with console anyway, so they, they get around that. So, I mean, I think that there's rumours that it'll cost somewhere in like 180 to 200 which would would put it well under the the other consoles but as you say like then you would have to have the internet speed as well to to actually even run Mm -hmm. that so i think it's an interesting it will definitely be it's not something that you know will be an option for me in australia because the internet where i am at this point is not good enough to support this Uh, but it will be definitely interesting to see how it how it rolls out and the other thing perhaps maybe the more interesting thing to me is that they will have a game store on it so whether what sort of prices they and and if you purchase those games you would own them digitally there what sort of prices they will will do and and whether they will maybe spark competition because competition is always good uh, across all the platforms i I don't know we will we will have to see yeah i don't know what this thing it's either gonna be i don't think this is something that's gonna be kind of an average performer. This is either going to be a serious contender or it's going to be another Ouya. Yes. Yes. Like, I, I don't think there's a middle ground for this thing. And I honestly don't know. Cause you know, cause you look at the specs and you look at what they're offering and you think, yeah, that sounds like a great idea, but it's really going to come down to how many people, how many people's internet can actually handle this thing in the way that they're promising. And I don't think it's going to be a lot. No. You know, I think if I went to, Where's the closest place to me that has Google? Kansas City. Kansas City, Missouri has Google Fiber. Like, I have seriously considered moving there because, uh, our, you know, yours is worse, but our internet's pretty pretty terrible. But Kansas City got is was one of the four or five cities in the United States that got Google Fiber. I feel like if you have Google Fiber, I think mm-hmm. this will work very well. But there's, you know, there's all these issues in the States right now with net neutrality and and people worried that internet companies are going to throttle streaming services, which I, I do believe they are. We have seen companies say they won't do it and then they do it. Um, like when, when all those California wildfires were going on, Verizon throttled uh, uh, internet data for uh, firemen's cell phones, which did not look well for them. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I'll I'll keep an eye on this thing. I think it's a very ambitious like I mean the the, the interest to me particularly like even just looking at that first game Assassin's Creed Odyssey like will be the lag in the even if you have a decent connection that the sort of lag in the I mean, I couldn't imagine playing a multiplayer game on this. Although looking down, I mean, they're all sort of single player games there. Well, the Division Two, I don't know, but you know, and Destiny Two. But there are there are a lot of single player games there as well. So it, yeah, as you say, look, it will be it will be interesting. We shall see. I don't know. We shall see. It's a it's a wait and see situation. Doesn't count until November, right? You said that's right. Yeah, yeah, November. It starts releasing, but I think we're looking more 2020 for 
wide, wide mm. release, yeah. Yeah, look, who knows? Look, I think, you know, rapidly, we must be running at a point now where we just don't have enough time anyway. So, you know, maybe Google Stadia can just, just jump on the backlog there. <laughs> we'll just forget about that for a while. <laughs> After the PS3, perhaps. Wow, that'll, that'll be a shift. And anyway, oh, I almost forgot our new release for this week. We have, we well, look, again, we're recording before the drop, so there may be more, but it's very unlikely because, uh, you know, we because the three's coming up, right? Yeah, yeah. But this one is a fun one. This one is a fun one. So we should we should pay tribute to it. Do you want to do you want to do the honors? You can read it, and I'll I'll expand. You can you can actually talk about it because you know. So leisure suit Larry, wet dreams don't dry. So well, this is a throwback to when you were a little boy or a little girl, isn't it? Sneaking playing this game without the parents seeing. Or maybe that's just me. Anyway, so hey, ladies, I'm back in business. My new adventure, leisure suit Larry, wet dreams don't dry, takes me, whatever the root or twist of fate from the end of the 80s directly into the 21st century and wow how the world has changed while my view of the world and women from way back in the 1980s <laughs> you just imagine if you said that today anyway collides with modern reality harder than the, the breasts of a lusciously stacked blonde jogging along a beach well it does say it. i'm all set to date my way across the modern world so what does the modern woman think of a uh, misogynistic game like Leisure Suit Larry, Mindy? All right, so before before I get, you know, booze of SJW Warrior and whatnot, I actually like Leisure Suit Larry. <laughs> yes, I think there's a, harmless fun. I think there's a strange charm about him. It's one of those yes. things that people would say is a product of its time. I think if you wanted mm. to start the Leisure Suit Larry series now, I think it would not go over well at all. No. But there's something there's something just kind of charming about him, and I I don't really know what it is. He's not he's not this like sex hound Lothario. He's just he's almost someone to be pitied. Where he's just like he's not for all that he's just in a leisure suit and, and just looking for sex, he's not like gross sleazy. There's something a little innocent about him. It's it's bizarre. I don't really know how to explain it. I'm actually looking forward to this. Yes. Yeah. I'm, look, I'm gonna play it. Yeah. I really am looking forward to it. I uh, I did I did in fact play uh, most. I haven't played all of them. I have played most of the Larry games, the original games. So Leisure Suit Larry had. It started on PC in the in the late eighties, and um, that's good. I, I I thought my timeline checked out. Late eighties, good. <laughs> yes, <laughs> carry on. Sorry. So there are there are seven Leisure Suit Larry games numbered, which consists of six games because famously Leisure Suit Larry Four does not exist. Oh, I did not know that. And uh, if you play, most Sierra games will make a reference to this. That Leisure Suit. Mm -hmm. you know oh you found the lost copy of leisure suit larry four but quite literally it's it's land of the lounge ledgers leisure looking for love which is leisure suit larry two then they start actually numbering these games so then there's leisure suit larry three and then it jumps to leisure suit larry five and i don't i i wish i could remember like there is an actual reason there is no leisure suit larry four i can't remember what it was those are actually kind of fun those are you know, classic kind of point and clicks. They're all done by Al Lowe, who, by the way, is actually a very nice man. Um, I have met him. He's a he's a he's a nice guy. What this is not, thankfully, is the awful console games that we have gotten from the Leisure Suit Larry franchise, which follow his uh, his son, which is funny because this dude who strikes out, you know, has a son. Oh no, it's not. It's not his son. It's, but it is some sort of relation because La Larry is Larry Laffer, and then and then the the guy in the console games is Larry Lovage, and there were two console games. There was Magna Magna Cum Loud, or Cum Laude, but come on, you know what it's supposed to be, and uh, Box Office Bust. And Box Office, I haven't played Cum Laude because, of course, I haven't, and because uh, it came out during that height of like. Girls Gone Wild videos, and that's exactly what the game was, right? And uh, then there was Box Office Bust, which is a famously awful, famously awful game. So, of course, I've platinumed it. <laughs> I don't know. Like, the, 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 leisure, the, the Larry Laffer ones for Leisure Suit Larry, 
like they were funny. They were trying to be clever. The ones with the console ones, they were more like, look at the 3D boobies and let's just be sexual but not clever about it. You know, I... Well, see, I'm a, I must have played the first or second one on PC. So that, w- that would be in the right age range. It would have been about eight or nine. And I remember there was definitely like a, you know, it was sort of excitement because we definitely would not have been allowed to play that if my parents had known. So we probably got some sort of bootleg disc, disc from somebody, probably someone at school or something like that. And, yeah, I don't know. I think it because it, it was so different to anything I'd seen, mm-hmm. I suppose. It's... Uh... You know, we did own it. My my family did own it. I don't know who it was bought mm. for because my parents are not really gamers. But I remember the, the room that the family, because it was a family computer. So the room that the family computer was in was like an office. And there were, they had, my parents had an encyclopedia set because that's just kind of what you did when the internet didn't exist. So... <laughs> That's right. That's right. You know, Sierra games, and especially this one, would have copyright protection. Uh, most PC games did. Mm-hmm. And it was usually like something that was in the box that you had to, you know, verify something in the manual or something. For Leisure Suit Larry, it was a series of questions that proved that you were old enough to be playing the game. And it was a lot of references that that no one could answer now because they were very much about the the, the 80s the time, yeah. and the 70s. Like people who were 18 to 20 at that point would know the answer to these questions. Yeah. But I, I distinctly remember looking at these questions in the encyclopedias in that room to get into the game isn't that isn't it a shame that stuff doesn't exist anymore <laughs> right <laughs> Dude, that's why children are the way they are <laughs> but then i also remember i also remember not not understanding why i was dying all the time that game because early in that game larry has sex with a hooker but to continue with the game you need to have you need to put a condom on him before you have sex with the hooker oh and of course, me being way too young to play, old enough to be able to read the game, but not old enough to really comprehend. I don't understand why I have <laughs> I have sex with this woman, and then like eight to ten screens later, I die because apparently, apparently, he caught something from this woman that is uh, is very quick acting, and and kills him. Yes, well, of course, the AIDS epidemic was was massive, and I knew that was wrong. I knew how it was supposed to end because the pictures were on the back of the box. Like you're supposed to meet this woman at a hotel in a hot tub. Like that's just how it ends. Yeah. Um, of course, I I got to be about thirteen, and then I was like, oh, now I understand how to play this game. You know, let's do that now. <laughs> yes, a lot a lot of the world reveals itself at the age of thirteen or fourteen, doesn't it? Right. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm actually I'm actually excited about this one. It's supposed to be more of a return to form. Good. Um, it's actually got it's been out on PC for I think six months, and it's actually getting pretty good reviews. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm excited for this one, and I'll probably write a walkthrough for it. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we all thank you. I think so. Listen, just just as a, a heads <laughs> up, that is it is listed in a few places to release the middle of next week, but I couldn't find any actual confirmation on their website. So it will either be next week or in the next week or two. Uh, that, but it definitely says releasing in uh, in June. So hopefully next week. Although you know it, it will be a busy week. So look, why don't we why don't we mosey on over to the topic of the week? Mindy, the digital yeah. future. It's here. It's now. Are you ready? Are you ready to join it? Should we join it? Why don't you start? Because I know you read. So this is off, this is off the back of, of the panic of you won't be able to download Telltale games even though you've bought them, which is probably a, fal- which is probably a false panic, but it did get us thinking about ownership of things you buy digitally. 
Yeah, yeah. So th- this is obviously, you know, listeners, if you, if you follow the sort of trends around the place, this is nothing new. This has been going on with Apple in particular and iTunes for quite some time, including some famous actors that have, have brought a court case against Apple to try and determine the, the rights of their the, your accounts, are, particularly after you die, whether you can gift them or what happens and, and trying to, to, you know, establish a, you know, legal precedent there or whatever else. But so it got me, it got me interested in doing some reading on the Sony policy itself. I, I'm, I'm happy to admit I'm a probably a 90% digital game buyer so you know you know, I buy it for convenience. Uh, sometimes for price, it is cheaper or whatever else. So, you know, I, I probably lean more in that camp than physical. So, you know, just declaring my, my preferences before before we start this topic, uh, so I don't jade your views. But one thing that I found very interesting, which I'd sort of, I suppose I'd assumed, but I, I hadn't noticed, you know, and it's always been there in the the, pol- the Sony policy when you buy, I, I've just skimmed over it, I suppose, is that Sony does, uh, does clearly state that they do reserve the right to pull a game at any time, even a game that you have paid for. Uh, they are allowed to pull. They're also allowed to pull the download of the game at any time if they wish, and they're not required to give you any refund or guarantee. That is at their discretion. Now, when you choose the, you know, click the OK button and, and buy the game, you are you are consenting to that. So that was something that, you know, again, I don't have a huge problem with that, but it definitely gave me pause to think that bigger the digital library gets, the, the fact that it could, you know, and I, I mean, it would be a massive bad faith for them to obviously take things away. And it would only ever happen, I'm sure, with licensing or, or whatever else, uh, or, you know, as we'll get into today. Well, even then, in I will say in their defense, even then, that does not seem to have happened. I no, cannot no, no. think of a single game that has been delisted from the store that if you did not already own it, you could not find it in your download queue and be taken to like a hidden page so you could download the game again. So in so while they legally can ten, can just not make those pages, I cannot think of a game that they've actually not done that. No, I, I can't at all. And I mean, there were, there were, you know, some of those puzzle games that were, that were delisted or whatever that are still available you know, if you paid. I've, I've never run into that either. I, I will say that I've probably had now about 10 times over three years where they've actually refunded me the money for the game purchase a week after. And that's been anything from the game was, and, and not that I've requested it, that, that the game was broken and they pulled it and it's been pulled completely. Or the game sometimes releases early. These are never AAA games. They're always indie games for some reason. And obviously it wasn't meant to be. I remember you saying something like yeah. that a couple times. Yeah, ago. and so I do get that you do get the full money back in that situation, uh, and then you get the choice to buy it again when it does come out if you want to. Uh, and sometimes you actually get a few benefits too. The dev, you know, throws in some extra stuff for you, you know, for supporting them early. So, so I've never been burnt in any way, but with this in mind. But, but maybe, maybe you can talk more to the potential of this, Mindy, and, and the things around it. Well, it's it, it's. <sighs> You know, you got to start thinking long term here. Like right now, it's it's okay because Sony will make it so that you can download this thing that you've purchased. You know, who's to say PSN is going to stick around? You are buying when you buy digital games. What you are buying is a usage license. Yes. You are not buying a, a a game. You are you are buying the the ability to play this thing that sony is hosting so far it's fine because they will put up these separate secret download pages so that you can still access them but at some point either sony's going to restructure how they do their marketplace and shut down the old one or they're going to go out of business and i'm not saying sony's having problems i'm saying this could happen to just as easily happen to microsoft or steam or uh, what's the new one? Uh, Epic Epic Game Store, or even even uh, Google's thing, the the Stadia, right? Well, it's not even that they they go out of business. They might just decide to move away from that business and just end support as well. So, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so what then? Then you have you have nothing. One of the biggest one of the biggest kind of talking points for people who are like, well, why do you buy? physical copies of games when you know it's so much easier to do it digital blah 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 blah. and the two things are usually a i can find it cheaper on physical if i just wait you know three months i can usually get a 60 dollars game for 20 bucks at most video game stores and the second is so I own the game. Well, I mean, you, 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 there's a lot of advantages to that as well. Like you have resale, you can give it to people, you can lend it. Exactly. All those things. So, 
Or if, you know, Sony decides to go out of business, you still have a disc. And as long as you have functioning hardware, you can play this thing you have bought. Yeah. I mean, in a way, I suppose we need to think of digital purchases renting, really, don't we? I mean, I know you're paying full price. It, it really is. It's really kind of a long-term yes. rental. That's what, that's what, and it's not just video games, like, like iTunes you were yes. talking about. Yes. Um, I have not used iTunes in years mm. because it was so awful and I've heard it's only just gotten more awful. So I can't speak to that, but it is, it is the same idea. That's right. You know, if iTunes closes down and they are closing down, right? Well, like that, what yes. happens to your iTunes library? Yes. Yeah, that's right. You know, I'm, I'm okay with it because ma- the majority of stuff I put on iTunes was CD rips. Mm. That's how I used iTunes was, oh, I have this little device now. Let me get my CD collection because I'm that old. Rip my CDs into iTunes because you can do that mm. and put it all on my iPod. That's, yes, that's true. See, I, I think that the thing with iTunes is that, you know, when it came out, that, that was a, a great alternative, but there are so many other alternatives now with Spotify and uh, Netflix or your Google Store, so many other options of buying or, or streaming things or renting things that, that you, you, you're you not necessarily tied to it. But with a console like PlayStation, you if you're buying digital, you have to buy from them. That's where it's coming from. You know, you can buy the code somewhere else if you want, but ultimately it is coming through their store, isn't it? So so you, there, there really is no other alternative. You either buy physical or you buy mm-hmm. buy digital. That they're the only two options at this point. So so what? Yeah. Like I mean, a, a lot of it's tied up in the licensing, isn't it? I mean, that that's the core of it. Like if if we accept the practice that it would be very bad faith to just remove games randomly, you know, and with competition in the market in, in the free world, it's, it's very unlikely that they would ever do something like that. So now we turn to things like like licensing and and abandonware and things like this. Would you would you talk to that? Yeah, license and copyright. So Abandonware, you're not much of a, a computer gamer, are you? No, no. So I'm, I play, the majority of adventure games I play are on PC. I'm not a PC gamer in terms of if it's on a console, I'm playing it on a console. So like, I have never played like Assassin's Creed on, I, I don't have a rig that that's, that, that's that good. I am more comfortable playing those kinds of games with a controller. And not a, not a a PC, but, you know, I grew up playing a lot of computer games, you know, point and clicks on computer. So there's this whole, there's this whole, uh, you know, the adventure game boom in in particular was in the uh, early to mid nineties, right? You know, even back then companies were bought and sold all the time which creates kind of this legal mess of, well, who owns the rights to this thing? You know, so what ends up happening is you get a studio closes or is bought out and the new publisher doesn't want to deal with it because they're like, this is not a popular genre anymore. We're shifting focus. Hey, look, this thing called Doom came out. Now first person shooters are a big deal. Let's start doing those, you know, things like that. So it kind of becomes what's called abandonware and and abandonware. I'm going to broad strokes this here and I kind of wish we knew someone who like was an abandonware curator because there's so many abandonware sites out there that are really good and people who 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 curate who who make lists and say this is definitely abandonware Mm -hmm. as opposed to this is just something that is not available but clearly has an owner for a long time a lot of the lucas arts games and the and the and the sierra games were like that where Sierra was a company that was in existence. They still owned the copyright to King's Quest and, and all those. They just weren't releasing them to modern systems. That's not Abandonware. That's straight up piracy. Abandonware is like, here's a company that has been for years. They put out a handful of games. We're not quite sure who owns them or the people who own them have zero interest and they were not there. They wouldn't make money at all if they were to release them. This is prior to GOG becoming a thing, good old games. But with that in mind, this is still not legal, though, is it, Abandonware? Like, it's No, it's not legal. No, it is not legal. If you download Abandonware, that is considered piracy. Yes. That having been said, it is a gray area because it's like, I would say 95% of things that are agreed upon as being Abandonware the rights holders are not going to come after. I shouldn't say not, definitely not, but generally speaking, they will not come after you and hit you with copyright infringement. 
like if you were to download a like say a tv show right so in the strictest sense yes it is illegal but it's kind of like going 40 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone like yeah you just broke the law yeah the cop could pull you over but they're probably not going to yeah it's a gray area you know if you're you know if you're going 60 yeah they're gonna pull you over hmm. so it's, it's almost like a situation like where they they understand this is happening but they look the other way sort of thing kind of yeah and it is you know it is just this big gray area and it's it's frustrating because you know there are people who want to play these things there are people who want to preserve the history of gaming you know we've we've lost a bunch of mostly text adventures from the 80s because you know, backup discs have deteriorated or they've just been lost or they've been overwritten. And then a couple, a couple of years ago, archive.org came up and it's a way to, to stream, to play in your browser, a whole bunch of what's considered abandonware. They're, they're doing okay. They had a couple of, you know, a couple of cease and desist hits on them, but you should link that in the show notes. uh, Archive.org. They're, they're pretty great. They're They're doing good work. You know, there are people who want to who want to preserve preserve these things. Yeah. See, see that that comes down to the line, doesn't it? As you say, like the consumer may still want to to play them, and and there may still be profit to be had here. This is yeah. one of the things that I, I think is the most alarming. You know, people that keep their sort of ear to the ground in the business world and, and monopolies and things like this. And as companies get bigger, it's not a question of profit anymore in the twenty first century. It's about enough profit for the shareholders and and best use of resources. So while companies could be buying and renewing these licenses and reissuing and still showing a profit they you're not going to show enough of a profit to make it worthwhile of their time. It's it's real it's really frustrating because there is an audience who want to buy it. So the the but there's no there's no legal way not legal. There is no traditional way to buy these games. Say, "Hey, I have some money to give you because I want to play uh, uh Leisure Suit Larry," right? So your options are to either A, download it from an abandonware site, yes. B, which is illegal, or B, buy an, a, a box copy of Leisure Suit Larry, buy the discs, buy the hardware that will run it, which is the legal way to do it because you own the game. Either way, the rights holders are not getting money for it. So why would I spend several hundred dollars on an old Apple computer and a box copy of Leisure Suit Larry when I can download it from Abandonware? Because either way, they're not getting money and they don't care enough to put this game in, to release this game in a position that I can give them money for it. That having been said, this was all prior to good old games coming around. And what good old games, now it's called GOG, but before it was called good old games because what they would do is they would locate, you know, they would, they would track down exactly who owns the rights to these games and say, Hey, we want to sell your game. They convert it to run on a lot of the times it's through like DOS box. They would convert the games to run on a modern system and they would put them up for a couple of dollars. It's all digital. So they're, you know, they don't have any manufacturing costs to cover and they did it and they, they did very, very well doing it. it. It helped that their position was also, we don't put DRM in our games and tying back into this digital, you know, buying digital games, you mm-hmm. can download the installers for these games. You know, something like steam, the game is in your library. You still have to run it through steam for good old games. They, they now have something like steam does. It's called God galaxy. You don't have to use it. Um, you can download the installer directly from the site and like throw it on a hard drive and you will always have that installer. So if GOG ever goes out of business, you still got all the installers for these things you have bought. That is the closest I can, I can think of to owning a digital game that you have purchased. Yeah. And and for the listeners here, I know it sounds like we're drawing a little bit of a tangent, but but why this is important, and for, I feel this way, and I think Mindy does as well, is we, we can only judge what's going to happen in the future by what's happened in the past. And this has happened before. This is why things like backwards compatibility, which Sony do not offer yet, and hopefully through PS5, they will. Why something like that is so important, isn't it? Because I mean, 
you know, short of that, there's going to be no way for a lot of these console games to exist. Yeah, it's it's very important. It You know, for the PS3, it was more a matter of convenience because at the time they were still, when the PS4 came out, it's not like they said, we're not doing PS3 stuff anymore. You know, there was a period of several years where they ran simultaneously. But now we look at kind of more big picture. Like for a while, you could still buy a new PS3 and give Sony money. You can't do that anymore. Now it's all, you know. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, because they're controlling the, the hardware. And see, I, I know I didn't mention this before we talk, but I'm not sure if you're familiar with this this company, this reboot in a way, this THQ Nordic that has, has gone around in the last year and is just buying up a lot of these old licenses. My understanding at the moment... They're the, they're the ones who bought up um, South Park, the, the South Park games, right? Whatever... Yeah, they uh, Darksiders, uh, Kingdom of Am- uh, Amalur. They, they're buying a lot. Yeah, I mean, at their last press call, they they, they claim to have eighty games in production. It's, it's unclear where the money's coming from. Like, obviously, the licenses they're buying, are, are, you know, would be on, on the cheap end now. <gasps> oh, but... these are the guys who did the Ask Me Anything on Eight Chan. Yes, yes, which was unfortunate place to do your press conference. But oh, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah. But I mean, so the the funding is whatever. But I mean, in a way, they they're sort of you know they're they're acting as a digital safekeeper, I suppose. I mean, if if they can financially pull this off, I suppose. Mm-hmm. I mean, if they if they go down, this is going to be a travesty for those licenses because the the legal nightmare will, will be phenomenal. I think mm-hmm. you know the fallout if they if they aren't dead. Uh, sorted there but if they if they are i mean a, a company like this could be could be the alternative because they seem to be happy to operate on a margin of of, of a smaller profit perhaps with these licenses as opposed to you know i mean you know we, we're not going to see one of the triple a companies go down this route unfortunately so so somebody has to to go down this preservation route i suppose as an alternative so there is you know one of the problems with the with the industry is is there's like two there's like two camps like you're either triple a or you are firmly indie right mm. and it seems like all games are separate into these two camps if you think about something like the ps3 and, and it's kind of starting to happen again with ps4 indie stuff but there used to be a middle market there used to be like the like the, the like like the single a or the or the double a yeah like uh like katamari Damacy. i would firmly call like a single or double a title on the PS2. Something like uh Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, right? That's like a single or double A. It's not a triple A game, but it's not indie either. Like there it it, it points to kind of a, a diversity in the market, not just in terms of genre, but in terms of you don't have to be a a zillion dollar title that makes all the money to be profitable like at some point there's a like remember when when square enix said that tomb raider was a sales success because it only sold several million copies and like so as a result rise of the tomb raider was an xbox one exclusive for like six months like they took that exclusive name like that's ridiculous so it, it doesn't surprise it saddens me but it does not surprise me that rights holders are not like what can we do to they basically don't give it the dollar bin treatment. Why wouldn't you say, oh my God, it would cost me next to nothing to slap this onto a disc and sell it for 10 bucks. You know, the hard work is done. Just incorporate. That's all that God really does. Incorporate it. So it runs in DOS box on modern system, sell it for five or 10 bucks. It astounds me that they don't do that. And I understand that there are some games that it would be a lot more difficult to code that way. But I think a lot of games, it would be fairly easy to do that. Mm. And, and to preserve and, and to offer them. Because I think the other thing, too, is if, if there is a legal means to get these things, a lot of people will, will pursue that mean. They don't necessarily mind paying a, a nominal fee, which I imagine these games would be, you know, a, a lower value for sale. They, they don't mind paying that as an alternative to, you know, scouring the net to try and find a bootleg copy or, as you say, to, you know, buy the discs and the old system and everything else, which would be ridiculous in, in itself so well and that's that's another thing is that if they didn't care that's the thing is they don't care enough to put it out but they care enough not to just let it be public domain yes yeah. and that's the frustrating thing is it's like it's like uh what's it called like domain squatting 
Yes. Although domain squatting is usually a trolling thing. Yeah. But like it's like I'm I'm having this so you can't have it, but I'm not gonna do anything with it. No. No. Well, I see, I think too, a lot of people think that things are worth more, you know, intellectual rights for certain things are worth more than they really are. You know, I mean, the rights for something are only worth what, what, you know, the market is willing to pay as well. So I think perhaps some of them are holding on to them with the assumption that there is still money to be made when maybe, as you say, public domain would, would be a better, you know, would really be the only option for them. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a very tough, I don't know. It's a, it's a very tough line. It is tough. I kind, I kind of wish we had, I kind of wish we had a uh, someone who who is an abandonware specialist, or even honestly, even a copyright lawyer. I think this would be an interesting conversation, because that's another thing is is copyright law is is really complex. It varies depending on where you live. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Well, look, I think that's some good ideas. I think I, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, look at that. Yeah, I think, I think that could that could be. I'm sure we can. I can sort. We can source a copyright lawyer. And I, I feel like this this digital license thing that that all that Steam and Xbox and PlayStation and, and Nintendo are doing is kind of just a a catch all workaround to it. If they say, oh, well, if we put it in our terms and conditions that you don't actually own this yeah. thing. Like problem solved. I'm going to ask you a question here, and I think we need to tread tread carefully, both of us, obviously, in answering this. So we'll just be general uh, in approach. But I'm also going to ask the listener to consider this too, if you're a digital purchaser. But have you know? And I'm sure, Mindy, even though you're a physical purchaser, you still have some digital games. Obviously, Uh, you know, you you could not. Have you thought about what what's going to happen to your account when either you just you don't care for gaming anymore, or God forbid, you 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 move on to the next phase after this life. Like, have you thought about late? Lately, I have, and it boils down. Well, to me, it boils down to at least it was my decision. Like, if I were to walk away from from gaming, like I do not feel cheated that down the line I don't have access to these games anymore because I have given it up, right? Where the problem is is that if I'm still gaming, but all of a sudden I don't have access to my digital library because Sony no longer exists. That was not my call. It's not, it surprisingly is not a matter of I can't sell my collection. You know, I have stuff I can sell. I still have physical copies of a lot of stuff. For the digital stuff, that's more of a, okay, well, I chose to walk away. I'm cutting, you know, cutting losses. I don't expect to get refunds on this stuff. That I did not physically buy. Yeah, it's it's an interesting question to ponder because because as we say, you know, Sony is obviously not going anywhere, but the market is rapidly changing, and whether you whether you want to stick your head in the sand or not, it is changing, and the the, the time on physical is definitely limited. And and what is going to happen when it moves to digital with players like Stadia, with Microsoft, you know, announcing the other week a, a partnership, well, at least a partnership in words, uh, you know, to explore cloud cloud services uh, further, and and you know how how you're going to adapt. And, and maybe we are moving to a to a world where uh, ownership is not important anymore. Maybe we are just renting these things, and and maybe there needs to be a price adjustment as well. There has been in the film industry to to combat this, and music industry. I think there absolutely, I think there yeah. absolutely needs to be a price adjustment if it's all if it's all going to yes. go digital. Yeah, look, I, I would agree. Why would you charge sixty dollars for a usage license versus sixty dollars for a physical thing that you own? That that is very true, and I mean, I mean, something else to consider is, you know, that you know, we always talk about competition in a healthy way, but but the competition we're moving towards is also a monopoly as well, and and when and it's a monopoly because at this stage, you know, Microsoft are the only ones that can sell on the Microsoft platform. Sony are the only ones that can sell on the Sony. There isn't cross buying between the the two of them, you know, at this stage anyway, <laughs> probably forever. So so when they when they do cut out all the physical things, which you know inevitably will will possibly happen then they will have total control over price setting on their system and they will also have total control on what and we're already seeing this with loose censorship anyway what they even choose to sell on their system as well which we we haven't sort of addressed here but i mean that that's another issue too isn't it that they can just refuse not to to have certain things on their platform if they wish that's true that is true um but yeah. that's i mean that's always been a thing 
That's true, but up until you know, with with the use of physical, like you can like there are games that are banned in different countries. You can import them. You can do whatever else. But you know, potentially these things will will change depending. And I I suppose it's going to depend on the the free market's demand. And I, I definitely you know, if if you look at trends, putting your head in the sand and just just sticking on the physical route is fine for yourself. But it's not going to it's not going to shape the industry. I mean, it's already moving away from that. So it is is something you you need to considering how much money you're going to tie up in these accounts or, or what you're going to do with these accounts and God forbid something happens to you or, or you do move on. So, I mean, there are, there are a lot of issues you know, with, with what will happen uh, along that. So I, I'm glad that we talked about this today. I know it got a little potentially dry for some of the listeners, but it is important. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people just bang on about how we need backwards compatibility, but they don't really understand why they just want to play the disc sitting in front of them. But the, the history behind it is fascinating. And and I, there are no real solutions at this point. I think. <laughs> would you Would you agree? It, it's not. And that's the most frustrating thing is that I wish we could sit here and talk about it and say, "Here's how I would do it." You know. Yes. I don't have an answer to that. No. You know, all I can really do is just recognize the the flaws in the system on the end user's yes. part. Not because that's the other thing. Yeah. You know, there's no problem on the. On the own, the copyright owner's part, it's the end user, it's the it's the customer side yeah. that it's it's an issue, um, and that's the frustrating thing because for all that the the game industry bangs on about piracy ruining profits and stuff, I honestly think it's it's not as big as a problem as as they would have us believe, and it does make me wonder if people who download abandonware or download ROMs you know, had access to these things on modern consoles, I firmly believe a majority of them would not illegally download things. I firmly believe they would give them money. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, that that's the Netflix effect, the Spotify effect. I mean, this, talking from my perspective, I mean, this is a, like, the bigger the company you are or the bigger that you are, you, you can factor in things like piracy. It's built into the margins. But the smaller you are, the more indie you are, the more on the fringe you are, the the less you can take a hit like that. And, and you know, that that is mm-hmm. why it is so important. If you're using creator's work, and I'm not going to preach here because everyone makes their own decisions, but if you're in a position to, and I know not everybody is in a position, but if you are in a position to support a creator at whatever level, particularly at a smaller level, they're the people that perhaps the margin is the smallest for. So if you're, you know, borrowing, begging, stealing their content, it becomes very difficult for them to continue. So I'm not justifying that it, it should be done necessarily on any of the fronts, but the smaller the, the developer or creator or whatever else, the, the more important I think it is, you know, and, and as we're saying with a lot of these older things as well, that the margin is so small. So every little bit helps. I think we, we live in a very entitled society where you think, well, you know, why should I pay anything for that when old uh, my old mate over here is getting it for free? But if the world worked like that, then it would be a, a very unpleasant place, I think. So, again, as I said, I'm not preaching, but maybe if there is an alternative, mm-hmm. you, you should uh, you should always look into that. You know, but but as we said, unfortunately, if there is no alternative, then I have no problem at all with using these methods. I think you you must do what you have to do. I don't know how you feel about that. Nick. I'm kind of sad now. <laughs> Yes, well, look, it, it is, it is, it is. It's, it wasn't our intention, listener, but it, it, it's a, it's a topic for reflection. I think some deep thinking, perhaps. Yeah. So, look, why don't we, why don't we put a pin in that subject there? And I think we'll, we'll further pursue this at a later date with maybe some professionals in this area. We'll see what we can do there, listener, because I think it would be fascinating. Yeah, should, we should have done, we should have done more research before we talked well, about it. Well, no, we this, did, we did a fair bit, but it was, it was, it was a timely thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and to be honest with your listeners, no, no, neither myself or me did come from legal backgrounds oh did i not say that i should have made that more clear yes yeah no, we're both educated professionals in different fields uh so you know we i would definitely reach out uh, and and i would be fascinated by that that side so we, we will do that so shall we transition across <laughs> to, from, from abandoned where to spam games many of these games spam will probably works. end up as, as abandoned where <laughs> one day <laughs> yeah should, should we have a look at the spam of the week yeah let's do that yeah well, while you're bringing up the list and and, and uh, getting your things, I'm going to throw out one: the Pix Arc. So this is a uh, this runs under the uh, 
the debug menu system, I suppose, of game, if you like. So very quick platinum can be done anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour. There are two random or slightly random trophies that, that could make you you know, take closer to an hour than 30 minutes, just involved loading in. My understanding at this point is there is a, only a video guide from the Xbox achievements uh, one, but I'm sure there will be one coming shortly and, uh, and it works perfectly. Yeah, and only one stack of that game. I see the usual to- trophy Degenerati are already done that. <laughs> I wonder who will be next. <laughs> have, have you got something? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> well, I know a bunch of, a whole bunch of Paugi Asia stacks just came out. Yes. But I think there's a new, is World Wheel, Word Wheel, the new oh, one? Oh, yes. It is. It is, yes. There's that, but I, I feel like you talked about it in the last podcast. I think Neon Junctions, I think this is the new Rack game, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, this is new this week as well. Yeah. Oh. And you've played this, right? This is like a platformer or something I like that? I have played a little of this, yeah. Uh, it is, yeah. It's it, like a first-person platformer? Uh, well, a platformer, like uh, I suppose you could loosely say puzzler. It's like a brick thing. You pick up the bricks and then you put them down to complete the circuit, and that finishes the level. Uh, but you, you do, mm. you, you have a character, I suppose, so you do run, and there's a bit of jumping, so... Yeah, I, I don't think it's very difficult. I've only played a, a few of the. I think there's thirty something levels. So I've played a handful. Of you them. know what I think is funny? If you look at if you look at this each of the trophy lists on PSNP, there's like four or five forum posts in East, and all it is is just different people posting their walkthroughs. Yes, there there is a there's a, a lot to choose from. <laughs> yes. Uh, actually, seeing you brought that up, I'm just going to throw something in here. This is a total personal preference of my own, and I know that I'm a unique gamer in that I, you know, start things and then slowly chip away at them. I, I usually, even short things, don't finish them in one sitting. But this, uh, I, I was using a particular uh, a guide for this, a uh, Velvet's guide, a video guide, which is fantastic, uh, fantastic, and great to hear. I, I know she, uh, she maybe sometimes drops in and listens, uh, a friend of Mindy's. So great to hear, hear your voice as well, you know, and now hopefully one day we will chat, I'm sure. Uh, but I was very much enjoying your guide, it, perfect as, as always. But one thing I would really like, and this is just to satiate my ego and make it easier for myself. You know, I'm sure you don't get this request from anyone else, but uh, especially in such a short game, is actually to time stamp the levels underneath or maybe just every like 10 levels because I tend to like maybe do 10 minutes and then that's enough for me uh, and then come back. So now I don't need to fast forward your video to find where I got up to. Now, I know that's completely selfish on my part, uh, but that, that I don't know, Mindy. I'm sure that wouldn't affect you because you would just finish a 50-minute game in 50 minutes. I imagine in one sitting, but I, yeah, I'm a little OCD like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but for those of us that you know, like the bright shiny things that are rapidly firing, um, I don't know, just just maybe a little timestamp, just give us a goal because 50 minutes is a big commitment to me. And anyway, sorry, ca- carry on. Let's see what else. Uh, if you consider Artifacts Monday game spam, uh, Queen's Quest Three is coming out. That game, that game will be donated to me, so I will be wa- writing a walkthrough for that. Excellent, thank you. Um, I think I need, I don't know why I don't get codes for these games. Hmm. Maybe we should but, reach uh, out to these people. I feel like at this Let's point do. I should be getting for these games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, uh, we, can, we can do that. We'll reach out. Listen. See, this is, listeners, this is why it's so <laughs> important for you to like or dislike, I don't really mind, or leave a comment or subscribe or whatever else because this is the thing that it just helps us with in reaching out to other people people uh, as we go and helping Mindy write fantastic guides so that we can all play Queen's Curse 3 in, in maybe an hour or two hours or something. <laughs> have you played this before on PC, this Queen's Quest? Or No, oh, okay. no, I have not. Excellent. So first time. Most, here. most Artifacts Monday games I have not played prior to their PS4 release huh. because I, at this point, I've just kind of given in. But for a while, and if we ever we, if we ever get him on the show, I have a friend who who also does a a retro games podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of one of our in jokes is how much I don't like hidden object adventure games, and it's not that I don't like them; it's that they usurped the term adventure game when it really it's a sub it, it's a sub genre of adventure game of, of the term adventure game. And that's just kind of the inside joke. So he would he would bring these up just to just to annoy me. <laughs> well, there we go. You know, these people. Will... But for I, I think I mentioned this on my on my interview episode was that for the two thousands, Artifacts Monday and Big Fish dominated the adventure game market. Like every adventure game that came out was from these guys, and they were all hidden object adventure games. Yeah, 
it, it just took over the whole term instead of being a subgenre like it should have been. Yeah, but look, you know, you know, as most of our listeners, if they made it this far, spam is the only thing they're interested in at this point. So, you know, we'll, we'll pop it on that list and, and we'll say that. I still say you should put this at the beginning of the podcast so they have something to play while they listen to us babble. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I tell you what, what if I do that this time? We'll, we'll, we'll re-chop it and see how that goes. If you like that, listeners, the spam at the start, uh, we'll go with it. Or you can let us know in the, the comments. Yeah, or if you don't, you let us know that too. Um, I'll throw one more out there that I found, uh, Slumlord. I'm going yeah, to take a stab on this. Look, look, it's all gold trophies and one silver, so it's got to be quick. Uh, got to be spam. and Slumlord? I haven't even seen yeah, that almost, one. It looks like a couple of stacks as well to PS4 at this stage, so possibly EU and NA. I'll take a stab on that. So Oh, Slum Ball. Oh, sorry, the, Slum Ball. Sorry, the, the platinum name is Slum Lord. Yeah, so I was just looking at the platinum name. Yeah, Slum Ball. Oh, okay, I was like, no, this is not a game I've heard. It's a heard. good platinum name too, actually. I like it. Slum <laughs> Ball. Yeah. Okay. And look at this, Human Fall Flat, the J- Japanese release. Wow, that's a, that's a long time coming. <laughs> well, that's... They're doing this weird thing where they're, they're having separate Japanese lists for games that are several years old. They did it with Broken Sword 5 last month. It's weird. It is weird. And all these Asian games. So, look, there is a ton to play there. Yeah. I mean, look, if you're still looking for games after last week's episode with that one seagull just dumping the whole short game catalog on us, plus the spam of this week, then you're doing something wrong because it's just ridiculous. <laughs> it is ridiculous. But or that, or that breakdown you did where it's like, here's how you can gain an entire trophy level in like two days. Oh, isn't that, wasn't that a great insight into my mindset? That was yes. interesting. That was interesting to listen to. Yes, well, look, I'm full of that sort of stuff, but I, I keep it to myself because I think it would disgust most people, my knowledge of some of that <laughs> stuff. So <laughs> I keep it to a small group that are of similar nature, I feel. So, look, that's been us for today. Thank you so much, Mindy. That was It was a fascinating talk, yeah? A little deep. I, I liked it, yeah? If, if we're looking for you, where can we, where can we find I you? I am on PlayStationTrophies.org. I'm on the guide team, so if you ever want to write a trophy guide, Hit me up. I can certainly help you out with that. Or uh, I'm on Twitter at the mind is a city. The mind is a city. Excellent. Yeah. And if you're looking for the show, we are now on Twitter as well at push the number two plat push two plat. Please come and join us. We're slowly building it up. Yeah. I, at the moment, I'm the the sole user of the Twitter account, but I'm going to try and get somebody that knows. What- I was going to. I was going to say. I need to say that CJ Soul proprietor of that account and i think he should give me i think he should give me access to it yeah i I look we'll do that today because look i don't really know what i'm doing with it so (laughs) usually i do nothing with it and uh, (laughs) except try and put the show on there so so there's something is coming along there um as well look the show is available on itunes podcast youtube soundcloud stitcher radio and spotify each week we are growing slightly which is fantastic just a reminder this is a totally free service so if you can help us out in any way by liking, subscribing, or telling people, or look, just whatever, I would appreciate it. A little shout out guide sponsor at the moment that we're sponsoring the Black Vulture. He seems to be dumping content left, right, and center. I'm sure you're seeing some of his work. Don't forget to give him a like. And if you are coming across from him, you know, I hope you stick with us and give us a like as well, because we provide something, something you can listen to while you're grinding, I think. (laughs) <laughs> whatever that type of grind that still sounds wrong oh, man. look look i'm gonna i wasn't gonna do it but look i know we're, we're at the end and i hate things that drag out but i'm gonna have to do it last night i watched the the first episode of uh the fifth season of black mirror i don't know if you if you watch this show Mindy, i haven't seen it don't spoil it i'm not going to spoil it in any way but look other than to say that if you're a video game player you're gonna love well you, you're gonna find the first episode very interesting it's gender fluidity it's gaming it's virtual reality it's the future it is both erotic and terrifying at the same time. It's just perfect. What an amazing show. So look, if you do nothing else this week, make sure you jump on that first episode. And I believe there's two others that dropped as well. So I'm sure that would be amazing. So until next week, I am done finally. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you, Mindy. Thank you, CJ. Bye.